CataractCoach.com, the tilt and chop technique. So we can see we have the nucleus above the pupil margin for about 180 degrees. Let me show you the technique here. So we've already filled the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. Here's the main incision. That goes beautifully, very nice. Now in order to get the nucleus partially prolapsed out of the capsular bag, we have to make a sufficiently large capsular axis. So we're aiming for about a five millimeter capsular axis. Five to five and a half would be just about perfect. If it's smaller than five, it's gonna be a little difficult to perform this maneuver. So make sure you have a decent sized capsular axis. You can see we're making it here. Nice pivoting with the incision, and that's gonna be just about five to five and a half millimeters. And it has to also be an intact capsular axis. It can't be radialized or weak at any point. So now we'll use balanced salt solution on a blunt cannula and we'll do some gentle hydro dissection. Now we don't need a whole lot of force here. It's a mild amount of force, but we're slow and consistent. And just like that, we get the nucleus partially prolapsed. Using the cannula now, we'll lift the nucleus up just to make sure that we have a portion of it, a small portion of it, above the iris. That's more dispersive viscoelastic that just went in. Here's the phaco probe, so high vacuum, high flow, moderate phaco power. So at least four or 500 millimeters of mercury of vacuum and about 40 cc's a minute of flow. The phaco probe is buried deep. The chopper goes around the nucleus equator and then the nucleus can be chopped. And you can see this is a relatively dense nucleus with good fibrous nature. And so it requires a few different chops. But with those first two chops, we're able to aspirate out about a quarter of the lens nucleus. And that looks good. Buzz in again. And look where the chopper goes behind the nucleus. So if the lens is tilted up on its edge, the phaco probe's on one side, the opposite side is gonna be the probe. Watch again. Buzz in here, phaco probe on one side, chopper to the other side, together and apart. And you can break off a little piece at a time. So remember, phaco probe one side, chopper to the other. And at this point, the rest is relatively soft. We can use the phaco probe to just aspirate this out as the chopper just pushes the piece forwards. Another little baby chop here at the end. And this goes relatively smoothly. As the last piece, uh, pieces of the nucleus come towards the tip, we'll put the chopper in the safe position just to prevent any contact with the posterior capsule in case they're surge. And that looks great, so it came out very quickly. That's the end of the technique. I'm gonna show you the rest of the case because I wanna to prove to you that the caps rexus is very appropriate in size. This is not an overly large rexus. So we'll do the cortex removal and we'll put the lens in the eye. This patient is a little bit hyperopic. It's a 25 diopter lens. And the anterior chamber is a little bit on the shallower side. But even then, we're not flipping the whole nucleus out of the capsule bag. We only tilted up one edge of it. So go back and watch that again. You'll notice that we only need to have one edge of the nucleus slightly out of the capsule bag to expose that lens equator. Then the phaco probe can go on the anterior part of the lens nucleus, and the chopper goes around back to the posterior side of the lens nucleus. Then the two instruments are brought together, and the nucleus is chopped. So there's the fill of viscoelastic, and you can see there's the outline of our capsular axis. And now our single piece acrylic lens is going to be injected in the capsule bag. And that goes in nice and smoothly. There's the first haptic coming out. As you know, it should come out like the number seven. And the trailing haptic should come out like the uppercase L. So overall, the haptics are in the anti-S formation. Remember, S is a stupid mistake because the lens is upside down. And now as we open the lens, you can see just how small the eye is. That's a six millimeter optic, but it looks positively huge in this eye.